Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookham here today. I'd like to talk about one of the Golden Era secrets, in particular on how to expand the ribcage. Uh, now this article by David Willoughby that I read in Your Physique um, in March 1949 truly addresses the technique of expanding the ribcage. This article is where this source of information is from and it is titled How to Stimulate Costal Upper Chest Breathing to Expand the Ribcage. In essence that is the technique, the method and the so-called secret. In order to expand the ribcage, in summary, one must stimulate costal breathing. Let's see how this is done. Costal breathing is otherwise in layman's terms known as upper chest breathing. When we breathe normally, when you're just walking about and, and doing your own thing in a calm, collected manner, normal breathing is diaphragmatic. Your diaphragm, your diaphragm muscles, which lie underneath your lungs uh, through different pressure forces in your body, cause your lungs to expand and, and uh, breathe in air and then you exhale naturally. You don't have to even think about it. However, um, costal breathing or upper chest breathing occurs only naturally when you are breathless. And so this occurs, for example, when there is a greater need for air. Uh, and you need to really understand this. This is, this is a deliberate thing that happens in the body. Um, and and uh, it only occurs, it only occurs during a state of breathlessness. I need to make you understand this. Only an, in a state of breathlessness will you need, uh, will there be a requirement in the body for deep breathing. Now the question is, how do you get breathless? Well, let's have a look at that. As mentioned earlier, when you are doing normal diaphragmatic uh, breathing, you are going about doing your normal thing that doesn't require any extra oxygen. Only when there is an increase in a demand for oxygen, and that only occurs when the blood has a high level of CO2, of carbon dioxide. When you have a high level of carbon dioxide in the body, the, the, the other muscles besides the, diaph the diaphragm become involved and cause this much deeper forced breathing. And this um, only occurs really when you're doing strenuous exercise. Uh, that's the, the best way to, to, uh, to really explain it. Strenuous exercise, which uses a lot of oxygen, causes the accumulation of carbon dioxide in the body. And therefore, your breath will become more forced and much more deeper. So I've addressed these first two points just to set the scene. Of, um, of breathlessness. This, this increase uh, in, in, in oxygen is caused by the breathlessness caused by strenuous exercise. I really need you to, to understand that. The next point it comes from some basic um, so, some basic I guess statements here made by, by uh, David Willoughby and it's got to do with the intensity of your breathlessness. The intensity of the breathlessness is actually actually uh, proportional. So during exercise, the intensity of breathlessness is directly proportional to the expenditure of force demanded by an exercise over a given time. What does this mean? Well, the intensity of breathlessness means simply how bad, how badly uh, breathless you really are. The higher, the, the more breathless you are, basically, the more breathless you are. Um, and this, this will be proportional uh, to the amount of force you've put in an exercise, which basically means that the harder the exercise, the more breathless you become. It's like going for a, for a walk, then going for a jog, you start breathing a bit heavier, and then you do a, you know, 10 meters, a, a 10 second sprint as fast as humanly possible. Believe me, you're going to be breathless at the end of that. And that's got to do, really, with the amount of force demanded by the exercise in question. And basically, that also has to do with the intensity of the exercise. The more intense an exercise is over a period of time, the greater the intensity, the more breathless you become. The last point here is the, the uh, exercises, I guess, that bring about uh, this greatest expenditure of force. And mainly, it is 
obviously by the most vigorous exercises that 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 are that uh, require the largest muscles to be used in the body and of course the largest muscles being the legs the hips and the back and these when these muscles are put under incredible intensity they will obviously give the greatest amount of, of force and therefore the uh, the state of breathlessness will be much much greater I hope I've made that very clear of course which exercise is the most intense and brings the, the, the greatest amount of breathlessness it is the breathing squat the breathing squat by far is the most strenuous exercise known it causes an incredible amount of breathlessness in the body and it stimulates very deep breathing and it therefore in this regard expands the rib cage I really want people to understand why it is that the breathing squat is recommended this is why I'm talking so much about the intensity of an exercise causing breathlessness it is so important because with breathlessness you must uh, breathe much deeper the requirement of oxygen is so much greater during the breathing squat and these very intense exercises that you just have to breathe more and by breathing much more the, the body is forced to use the rib cage not just the diaphragm but the rib cage is also put into play and and therefore now that the lungs are, are really expanded and therefore that the rate the, the 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 rate that the the rib cage expands is enormous and this is why back in the golden era most if not all bodybuilders did the breathing squat for the development development of a very large and voluminous rib cage how do you breathe during the, the breathing squat is one of the questions I've been asked. Well, between reps, it really has to be deliberate. Deliberate means you are consciously thinking about these deep breaths. Deep, deliberate breaths need to be performed. And these are um, obviously between each, uh, each squat that you do. Right. So between a rep of squatting, you would take, for example, a minimum of three deep breaths and then you, you would squat down and come up and repeat and take three more breaths at least a minimum a minimum because um, as you start reaching the 10th rep the 15th rep or the 20th rep of a set of a breathing squat because most breathing squats are performed for 20 reps once you start reaching those higher numbers 15 20 believe me you'll be taking five uh, breaths if not more right um, and for more advanced lifters I guess those that have been doing this for a while they can take as, as, as mentioned here 10 to 15 breaths um, and uh, these uh, I need to I need you to understand these are guys that, and are now uh, that are now doing breathing squats with 300 or 400 pounds that's an incredible amount of weight the amount of breathlessness due to the intensity of this uh, exercise imagine putting 300 or 400 pounds on your back and doing 20 reps with that that is that is that is very advanced and that would require an insane amount of oxygen your breathless your state of breathlessness would be huge and therefore you would be breathing 10 to 15 times between reps um, now that another question I was asked actually is it nose to mouth nose to nose or mouth to mouth breathing it is mouth always just mouth you'd be breathing in and breathing out through your mouth so mouth open breathing absolutely because you can really take an enormous breath like that it has to be deliberate um, and whilst the breath is being taken during that inhalation you need to deliberately raise the upper ribs and you need to think about expanding the chest um, open to its utmost size and this again has to be deliberate it needs to be a deliberate action and this deliberate action of opening the chest, of expanding uh, the chest and opening the ribs, stretches the muscles and the cartilage of the uh, costal, uh, so of, of the rib cage, promoting greater rib uh, rib cage flexibility, and it also improves your, your posture and obviously opens and opens the volume, increases the volume of your rib cage. Uh, another important point, of course, is 
how much poundage one uses in the breathing squat and how these sets are performed etc etc I haven't said it clearly enough this is the breathing squat is performed for 20 reps that's why it's called the 20 rep breathing squat uh, for beginners uh, only a, a hundred pounds is more than sufficient and as you become more advanced there are two schools of thought one school of thought is that you would use your normal body weight and perform that for 20 reps or another school of thought is to use your 8 to 10 rep max and you just keep grinding I mean a 20 rep squat with your 8 to 10 rep max my god that is hell that is a ball busting freaking workout you'd be dead after that I guarantee it um, after a 20 rep breathing squat set by the way you would I mean it is suggested that you only do one set however some of the golden era bodybuilders would actually do three to four sets of 20 rep breathing I have no idea how the hell they could do that they'd be dead after that I swear it is so hard um, but the idea is that whether you do one set three sets or four sets or whatever you would superset your your 20 rep squat set with a, with a pullover uh, set you do a, a set of pullovers the dumbbell pullover obviously is the recommended exercise of choice here is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger showing you the beginning of the pose uh, of, of the uh, exercise and then halfway through to the bottom of the exercise notice the photos show that Arnold at the beginning has his rib cage really expanded his his upper chest is really expanded his arms are, are, are kept straight as possible his, his shoulders are on the on the uh, on the bench this is a cross bench pullover by the way and his hips start pretty much in line with his shoulders but as he comes down you can see his mouth is completely open right he's taking an enormous breath in look at his pectoral stretch right notice how high now his rib cage has gotten he's really stretching his ribcage, his shoulders are far backwards, downwards and sidewards, right? He's really emphasizing the stretch in his ribcage. And not only that, he actually drops his hips further down, which further expands the ribcage. These are all very important points. As mentioned, for pullovers, you can use either a bench and do the cross bench version. The old golden era and old school method was to actually use a moon bench. And that was uh, a common bench found, which is a semicircular bench, basically looks like a half moon. Um, and you would lie on that because it, all, it would already stretch you out and cause um, stretching of the ribcage. But nowadays you can't really find them. So uh, a bench is good enough and you basically go across it and, and perform your pullover like Arnold was right there. Your arms go back, down and sidewards. This motion alone allows the ribs to expand pretty much to its limit by dropping the hips further than the ribs your ribs can actually stretch even more so so this is why it's really important to keep these points in mind when performing the dumbbell pullover you would only use a very light weight of 25 to 50 pounds and you could you could perform usually a set of 10 to 15 reps um, between sets of breathing squats but if you can do more than one set, well, congratulations, because that's really hard. Um, the idea is to superset your pullover with your squat. So you do your squat set and then do your pullover set. Exercise performance, as mentioned, you hold the dumbbell overhead, arms outstretched. You take a deep breath as you lower the weight behind you, mouth open, and you stretch your, your ribs to their limit. And you then expand the chest as much as as possible stretching the ribs to their limits uh, as the bell comes up again you exhale completely and you can I guess also use a dumb uh, a barbell you as I mentioned earlier you perform this set after a squat set and another point that I'd like to add is actually that dumbbell pullovers because you are mainly focusing on breathing and you're not using a heavy weight actually aids in your recovery after a, a hell a hellish set of of breathing squats it really does help in your oxygen recovery another exercise that is actually performed or can be performed uh, supersetted with the uh, breathing squat 
that most people actually don't do is the dumbbell fly. Now I want you to notice again what Arnold is doing here. He has got, uh, in this case, uh, he's lying on a bench, uh, and, you know, along the bench, but although it should be a straight arm fly that is performed supersetted with the squat, I don't, I don't really care that he's not doing that at this point. Notice his spine is bridged at this point. That's really important. It allows the, the ribs to expand and the, the rib cage to expand quite a lot. Notice that his chest is really high. And again, he's breathing through his mouth. So whether you're doing um, your flies straight arm or you're doing them with bent uh, arms, the most important thing, and one thing I found about golden era bodybuilders, is that regardless of the exercise they were doing, they were always very conscious about their breathing. Their breathing during an exercise also contributed to their rib cage expansion. If you're really conscious about trying to expand your ribs, I think one of the most important things is not just to practice breathing squats and pullovers and dumbbell flies, but the most important thing to also realize is that it is the practice, the practice of deliberate upper costal breathing that will expand the rib cage. I can't stress this enough. It needs to be a deliberate conscious effort. You must think about expanding your rib cage as you do each exercise, regardless of which exercise it is, whether it is a lat pull down, whether it is a dip, whether it is a bench press, whatever. Think about your rib cage expanding as you inhale in. It is the most important key of developing the rib cage. Uh, now, with the, with the dumbbell straight arm flies, um, again, you would use a light dumbbell, not like Arnold was doing. That's for more for muscle building. But even then, he's still thinking about his ribcage. I want you to understand that. But for straight arm flies, you would use uh, a very light weight. And again, you would focus on deep breathing, keeping your arms down, back and sideways as much as possible to expand the ribcage. And as I mentioned, you could, you could exa for example, do pullovers, uh, after your first set of squats and if you decide to do another set of squats you could also just alternate and, and use dumbbell straight arm flies they both have a similar effect in expanding the rib cage these three exercises are key though these are key the the breathing squat the breathing squat being so intense stimulates in summary i'm, I'm summarizing here the breathing squat stimulates breathlessness which uh, so you've got a demand for oxygen and basically you, you are you are forced to to breathe deeply and therefore this stimulation of breathlessness expands the ribcage what aids further now in the stretching mechanical stretching and further deep breathing is using the fly or using the pullover so that in summary is what this uh, technique is about i hope you've enjoyed watching i know it's a rather lengthy video but it does take time to really understand why these exercises are used. I, I, I hate to just say, yeah, just do 20 rep squats and, uh, and pullovers. You, you don't learn anything. You, you don't understand why. The why is so important. And again, the why in regards to ribcage expansion has got to do with the intensity of the exercise, stimulating breathlessness, causing forced breathing, which leads to a ribcage expansion as displayed here by Reg Park. Look at that. Look at those ribs. They're about to goddamn burst through his skin. And I mean, when you've got rib cage, a rib cage as, as such, your muscles are better displayed. And this is something I want to also uh, cover in a separate video. The reason why also, why, why golden era bodybuilders liked um, expanding their rib cage. It's got to do with health. It's got to do with appearance. It, it, it gives the, the body um, a better structure. The, the, the slabs of muscle on top of that look fantastic. I mean, there, there's several reasons, and I'm, and I'm going to cover that in a separate video. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Thank you if you have watched it to the end. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the Golden Era Bookworm for more videos like this. Leave me a comment, and bye for now.